Got it? Yeah, uh, good morning, Maureen, and good evening, guests in Singapore. It's my great pleasure to invite my old friend, Professor Maureen Alex from University of Warwick. And uh, he is my old friend in, he, in ferroelectric. He's, he's an international famous guy in multifarics, basically including magnetic and ferroelectric cities. And he also uh, very keen on, on ex expand his research interests in many, many other areas, including nanostructures, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, multi-layer thin epitaxial and thin films, and uh, so when I work with him, he's also working on piezoelectric property of zinc oxide uh, uh, as well. So recently, I think he he also stepped into this uh, hot topic of uh, skirmings and the vortex ferroelectricities. So um, uh, we know that ferroelectricity can be suppressed or can be enhanced depends on how you engineer the the dipoles, right? So some years ago, we know that Ramesh published a lot of papers about this engineering failures in the epitaxial thin films by substrate. But then nowadays, people are talking about topological structures. You may have new physics. So I think Marin today probably will share his recent uh, fantastic great, brown, great brown, uh, breaking work uh, published, accepted in Nature, about the new discoveries of the vortex structures of failures dipoles. And uh, so uh, about, a little bit about Marin. So, uh, let me see. Uh, Marin got his PhD in 1995. Okay, that's the year I started my college. In Romania, Romania, he has been appointed as a chair of functional materials in University of Warwick after spending 18 years in Germany, a very small east town of Germany called Halle, where there's a Max Planck Institute of Microstructures, where I also spent three years overlap with the marine and we also collaborate together. So his major research interest, as mentioned just now, is about multifarics. He's a physics and engineering of complex oxide thin films uh, for information technology and also for integration of functional materials uh, for, for the oxide electronics. So he recently got a lot of uh, prestigious awards, including the Watson Research Merit. And this is a Theo Murphy Blue Sky Awards from the Royal Society as well as uh, uh, the prestigious German awards called Alexandra von Humboldt Research Awards. I think uh, without further ado, please join me to welcome Professor Marin Alex. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Hong Jing. Thank you very much, Justin. My pleasure, my great pleasure. Uh, it's my pleasure to, to be there in Singapore now, where it's nice and hot, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, show you uh, the work we are doing here. Um, it's, um, uh, let's say, uh, I would, I would rather, uh, uh, be in person there delivering this talk, Definitely. talk to you face we... to face and visiting you and your facilities, great facilities, Singapore. But of course we have now the Omicron, uh, variant, yeah. which is coming. We have another probably 22, uh, uh Greek letters. We will go through all of them, and then uh, probably I will visit Singapore somehow. Um, it was on my yeah yeah it is on my on my list for yeah. next yeah. Uh, year yeah, yeah put so, that into to do this. Uh, I hope I will be able to to come over, uh, but I doubt. Anyway, so let's start um, the presentation, and I will uh, share my my screen. Okay, so then uh, let's go to business. Thank you very much again. Okay, and I'm very sorry that uh, uh, took so long to to get on. Uh, I bet. Uh, let me, okay, so we have the so-called laser pointer. Everything it's okay. So um, I'm gonna talk today on incommensurate spring crystal phases, and that would be on both ferromagnetic and ferroelectric systems. And you will see that it's a kind of, uh, not necessarily, uh, we find this in the same system, but at different boundary condition and, and, uh, and you will see. I will, I will put it somehow historically because it's the way we've got it and it is somehow interesting uh, to learn that. So first of all, where is Warwick? So uh, Great Britain uh, is not that great, yeah, so for the moment, 
but uh, uh, everybody knows where London is. But uh, I'm probably sure that uh, very, very few of you knows where the Warwick is. And uh, I'm pointing now the Warwick is actually in the middle of the country. So uh, we don't care about the Scotland, Wales and North Ireland. So, so just focus on uh, uh, England. Uh, and then you see here where Warwick is. Uh, he's been a very rural area. You see here the campus, uh, which is uh, uh, all, all around. You see ships on the field and it's very nice and it's very green, except these days when it's white. Uh, but it's very, very uh, 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 nice. And as you see, we have a, um, a very nice campus, green. You find everything, gooses, you find uh, uh, wild uh, um, life and also a number of Im important places like, like pubs. You have to be there. So weekly. Hey, anyway, so this is the campus. And uh, um, just to, to say something about the university, university, it's a quite a new university at the history of universities in this country. So which can be as old as uh, uh, seven, eight hundred years. Uh, we've been only 50 years old. Uh, we have about uh, uh, 25,000 undergrad students, probably now we are 27. Um, we have quite a big number of postgraduate students, so we do quite a bit of research. Uh, uh, this is now uh, cancelled, so there is no uh, uh, EU students anymore, so they are uh, overseas students as well. And then you see that we have a fairly large amount of overseas students. Uh, because This is because of... Uh, uh, day-by-day -day life, with it, which is much cheaper than in London. And as you see, the ranking, because uh, most of us like this ranking, because always one is better than four or five. And uh, uh, we have uh, Warwick somewhere in this one to ten, whatever. So it's one of the, uh, uh, the big league uh, universities. Um, so... Just go to the business now. So the main uh, uh, thing is uh, that I would try to introduce the topic and I will be fuzzy because I don't know many things here. So uh, um, maybe some of you do know more about uh, topological Hall effect and all things like this. So I'm not uh, uh, an expert on this, uh, but nevertheless, we've been managed just to visualize uh, a kind of uh, a phase which is called incommensurate spin crystal phase uh, in strontium ruthenate, which we know that it's a ferromagnet. Uh, and then we managed to actually do the same, if you want, but using completely different tools uh, in uh, uh, visualizing uh, and detecting uh, the same uh, spin crystal now in a ferroelectric material. Uh, this is uh, a, a kind of overlapping in, in existence of such kind of spin uh, uh, crystal phases uh, between ferroelectric and ferromagnets, uh, which is for me quite unexpected. Now we shall see what would be the, 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 the finish of this story, probably is going to be fuzzy as well. Okay, so uh, I must thank first uh, my group. You see here uh, my group, which uh, uh, for, for the moment it's uh, becoming slimmer and slimmer because my guys are, are, are uh, uh, going uh, uh, to take their own positions. Like when Dong He, see he here is, uh, is now back in, uh, in, in China as assistant professor. Zheng Dong Lu is also back in China as uh, um, also as, as uh, uh, associated professor, not as assistant professor. Um, and uh, uh, Ming Bin, uh, who is, uh, uh, was very uh, good, uh, close collaborator, now is back here at Warwick as assistant professor. But for this 
very specific work. Uh, the main players were uh, um, Doreen Russo and uh, Sam Sadon, along with uh, Daniela Dogaru, which uh, they uh, work intensively on these uh, two topics. And I should also uh, mention the sponsors, uh, uh, the Research Council, the, the, the Physical Research, Engineering and Physical uh, Sciences Research Council, EPSRC, the Royal Society, and uh, of course, for some of the travel, so uh, von Humboldt uh, Foundation is also important. So let's go and see what is this topological Hall effect and why is this work significant for this topological Hall effect? Or in other words, that has been actually uh, uh, draw the attention, uh, my attention, this topological Hall effect uh, and getting into this business, which is normally not my main uh, field. So, um, and this is the topological Hall effect. So practically when you have a Hall effect, you may have something similar like this one, which is a material which is uh, plain metal, uh, has no magnetization in, and soon after the magnetization kicks in, uh, another type of uh, um, Hall effect, which is called uh, anomalous Hall effect, uh, is kicking in, just because the effective magnetic field is given also by the internal magnetization. Now, um, on top of that, if you have a kind of topological structure, some abnormal uh, uh, scattering does occur, and this scattering is always associated with such kind of uh, jump into the whole resistivity. And you see here that this evolves during the, uh, uh, the temperature, it becomes uh, more significant at, lo at lower temperature. And this, is, this was, was thought to be uh, as a result of uh, um, interaction between uh, uh, strontium iridate in this case and strontium uh, ruthenate. Uh, uh, strontium iridate, the, due to iridium, it has a fairly large spin orbit coupling, which may induce the jaroginsky moria interaction. And I will show uh, you uh, later. Uh, that happens also on, on uh, plain strontium titanate, and that was a, a surprise. And, uh, and also you see here, these are the uh, topological hole effect uh, uh, resistivities, which are uh, thought to come from special topological structures like skirmions. So in the normal metals uh, or skirmion uh, uh, crystals, you have those kind of skirmions in, in which the magnetization whirls, and that is a three-dimensional, it's like a, like a tube, like a sausage, if you want. And that will scatter uh, practically the uh, uh, the carriers, and I will show you a nice cartoon uh, later. Uh, this across uh, a a, a uh, uh, let's say a skirmioning phase crystal, we have always that always occurs under a little bit of 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 mag uh, magnetic field, and is a very close to. Uh, phase transition. So in, in, in other words, magnetization must be soft to be, to start whittling in this very particular way. So either it's a nil type skirmion or a block type skirmion, you see the way of winding is, 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 is different. So uh, nevertheless, the more, if you want, stable phases are uh, chiral phases like cycloidal phase, and uh, helical uh, phase, which were known before skirmion phases. Anyway, there is a phase transition, and this skirmion pocket is 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 usual uh, in uh, in uh, uh, skirmion uh, crystals, in which uh, uh, these skirmions uh, uh, occur usually due to this jaroginsky moria interaction. So, so the free energy has a uh, all kind of components which are quite normal. So like exchange effect between the magnetization, uh, a gradient, 
And then there are second order effects like Jarogis Kimoria interaction, which is coming uh, either at the interface, uh, which is in this case uh, due to the canting of the spin, uh, which is given by the spin orbit coupling. And there is a vector, Jarogis Kimoria uh, vector, which will push this rotation of the, of the uh, magnetization. The main ingredient here to occur, Jalojinsky Moria, is a symmetry breaking. So the interface, it's a normal uh, symmetry breaking element. But if you have a, a, a non uh, uh, symmetrical, uh, crystallographically speaking, a, a broken uh, uh, inversion symmetry crystal, so you may have big chances to get this uh, Jalojinsky Moria interaction in the bulk and then generate this uh, skirmion phase. And that is exactly what is happening with these skirmionic crystals. Uh, anyway, the idea is that if the electrons flow through these skirmionic uh, 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 systems, uh, you have a momentum uh, which is given to these electrons. The electrons actually uh, uh, will act as a um, um, wave. As, as we know, is not all about uh, the electron as a particle, but also as a wave. And they will get, a, a, during the interaction, they will get a phase shift. And whenever this phase shift, it will, it will get a uh, two pi, they will get actually a momentum. So the interaction between the electrons and, uh, and, the, and these topological uh, structures will, will, act, will give an additional scattering, an additional uh, uh, momentum uh, which would deliver this, this additional pick into the resistivity. And then you see here exactly uh, how the phase pocket may occur uh, and so on and so forth. So that there, there is absolutely fantastic uh, 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 review. Uh, and uh, uh, Tokura's group uh, at Riken, uh, uh, he, he was studying these uh, phases intensively uh, and, uh, and I think the best, uh, if you learn more about that, is just to follow his, uh, his work. Anyway, uh, the interesting uh, uh, work which drew me attention uh, was given by uh, Taiwan Nose Group in Seoul, uh, who discovered the, this topological Hall effect of strontium brutonate on barium titanate. And that's very interesting because he mentioned that the, the skirmionic phase is strontium rutinate should occur due to the barium titanate. Uh, and this is due to the fact that polarization will extend into the barium titanate. There is a controversy now in the literature, which is uh, said that is actually not uh, the skirmionic phase, which is doing that, is just inhomogeneity in the thickness. And that gives anomalous fall effect with two different uh, amplitude and two different, uh, 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 you know, um, chiralities, so, so to speak, in this hysteresis, and that will result in this anomalous story effect. It was not my intention to solve this problem, but my intention was just to let's have a look what is happening with a strontium ruthenate when we put let titanate uh, on on let titanate. So let titanate, it's a very strong um, ferroelectric. And especially uh, if you put it on a strontium titanate, like, like Hongjing mentioned, you have compressive strain, and that will give a massive uh, polarization, which go beyond 100, 110 microcolumns per square centimeter. So it's one of the greatest, uh, along with, uh, with uh, bismuth ferrite. So, and on top of that, it grows very nicely on strontium titanate. So we grew, uh, let titanate on strontium titanate, and then few unit cells, you see here six to eight uh, unit cells strontium ruthenate on top of that. So, and the idea was, okay, we do have this topological hole effect. We, we, we characterize that we have a massive topological hole effect of much, much higher than, 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 than the normal. We've looked also into uh, uh, the structure and the structure was absolutely great. Um, 
and um, the idea is that we have also a very nice tool, which is a uh, low temperature atomic force microscope, which can do all kinds of microscopy, like, like you do uh, room temperature atomic force microscopy, which include magnetic force microscopy, piezo force microscopy, scanning Kelvin probe microscopy, and so on and so forth. We can do it down to 1.5 Kelvin, uh, and we can do it with with a uh, vector magnetic field, which would have nine Tesla axial and one by one Tesla in, in, in plane. So we can play, we can put our field in any direction up to one Tesla. So, which is sufficient for most of, of uh, the, uh, let's say, relatively uh, uh, soft uh, uh, magnetic materials. Uh, and we took our samples and we plugged them in, and then we start looking at uh, a magnetic force microscopy to detect what would be actually the um, domain pattern which may be associated with this topological hole effect or with rise into this range of, of magnetic fields which uh, uh, are exactly the topological hole. And we did this, uh, uh, um, Sam uh, put a lot of effort and uh, uh, made the MFM working at very, very low temperatures, uh, not only MFM, and then very, very carefully uh, start uh, uh, measuring. And then you see here that we, we went on magnetic field exactly in this range where the topological hole effect occurs. Uh, I have to mention that we didn't measure the topological hole effect in the same run. So we measured the topological hole effect in a separate run, but it's on the same sample. So it's not uh, uh, something different. So, and then you see that we already at zero Tesla, we see some patterning, which is interesting because it doesn't fit with the, uh, uh, with the step terraces. So it's not the same. So, and then with the magnetic field, uh, you see that evolves into a square lattice. And this is actually much better to see in the Fourier transform. So if we transform Fourier, these uh, patterns, you see that we have four uh, peaks here, which evolves with the uh, magnetic field which at very high magnetic fields, they disappear completely. And at very, very high magnetic field, it's only one single, um, let's say, uh, uh, domain with no other uh, magnetic structure which, which occurs. So it is a 2D ordering. And then we scratch our heads and say, what would be this as a phase? Because the, 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 the spacing between this it's quite small. It's about 100 nanometers or, or, or th this is a micron here or, or a quarter of micron, I don't remember exactly. So it is also relatively small for a magnetic domain. So, uh, and then we, 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 we analyze, of course, and then we arrive to the conclusion that it should be a so-called double skew structure, we have a periodicity which is in two perpendicular directions. So you see this is one uh, uh, periodicity if we uh, uh, select only one peak of uh, uh, Fourier transformation. And then we have another one which is not that nice, but all in all, we have this nice uh, 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 periodicity. So. Finally, we end up exactly in that type of skirmionic phase, which is uh, uh, which was proposed by actually by Tokura's group, and um, they said, "Okay, we have this skirmionic phase here, this pocket, but this skirmionic phase is actually embedded in through a two other type of phases. This is so-called." I see one, it's a cycloidal phase, it's a cycloidal state, it's a stripe 
domain. It's one Q uh, domain, which may be perpendicular, but not perpendicular in the same time, in the same place. Then you have another phase, which is called IC2. And this is the double Q phase in which you have this modulation of the initial uh, uh, periodic phase with the second periodicity along its own structure, you see here, like this. And this has been coiled as incommensurate, it's been crystal. Why incommensurate? Because it doesn't fit with any, you know, crystallographic uh, 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 periodicity. So it has its own periodicity by itself, which is decoupled from the crystal. And it's very nice. And then uh, it, our, uh, 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 idea was uh, that it's uh, pretty easy to compare them and then to say, look, this is exactly uh, uh, the, the phase we are seeing there. So it's, it's the periodicity, double Q per periodicity, which we see now in the real space, not uh, uh, in the, in the reciprocal space. Uh, it, can, it has been determined in this very particular um, crystal by new, neutron diffraction. So, in other words, we have that phase, which we believe it is a cycloidal phase because we have detected exactly this type of sinusoidal, uh, um, you know, transition between those uh, uh, phases which are running perpendicular to the main uh, periodicity. So why this phase would occur? So that's the main question. Why is going to occur this very particular phase in, in, uh, in uh, strontium uh, ruthenate on strontium titanate? And if we think a little bit more, we, we, we have to charge polarization on that. The strong polarization in the ferroelectric layer and relatively lousy, or is not lousy, it's, it's a metal which is not really a metal. So it's not a classical metal. It's, it's actually uh, uh, a, it has a metal behavior, strontium ruthenate, but it uh, does not have a metal bond. So, uh, and for that reason, so polarization decays, must decay at, at the end, at, at the interface. Uh, but uh, it might decay either within the ferroelectric layer or it might decay within the metal. And there are some metals which are very good, not mentioning platinum, uh, if you want cobalt or any other material, um, classical metal, uh, in which the polarization can extend only a very, very tiny uh, distance which is called Topaz Fermi screening length, which is about 0 0.1, 0 0.5 angstroms. Okay, so that's very, very little. But in this metal, we've been looking what is actually doing polarization. And we calculate by DFT and measure and say, and seeing that practically the polarization decays into the strontium ruthenate on a significant distance. It's a more than, than a couple of nanometers. So it's about three to four, even more unit cells. So you see here, so in terms of nanometers, it may go a couple of nanometers down as a DFT calculation. This is the distance between uh, the oxygen and the A side, and then the B side and the A side, and then so, so on and so forth. And that goes with the um, symmetry breaking. So, and then you see here the, the, the real measurement here now is measurement by measuring the real position of the atoms uh, by, by uh, scanning uh, transmission electron microscopy. And we see that indeed follows not exactly as you know, like a DFT, but you won't actually. Uh, um, um, expect that, but it's a significant distortion of the initial uh, symmetry of the of the strontium ruthenate. 
and that induced a non-central symmetric strontium brutinate. We can call it polar strontium brutinate if you want, uh, uh, but definitely that will induce a bulk-like jaroginsky moria interaction. And that would be sufficiently high just to tune locally the magnetization, magnetization swirling and uh, give us this incommensurate spin crystal, which we have revealed in the magnetic force microscopy. This phase might be chiral and might actually induce the uh, uh, topological hole effect. We are not sure about that. So, uh, and we cannot, from our experiments, we cannot decide that. So that shall be decided actually from additional experiments or from additional uh, DFT calculation. Uh, anyway, we, we, what is the idea is that the ferroelectric layer induced this topological hole effect or induced that phase into, into uh, the strontium rutinate. But the, the origin, the real origin of topological hole effect in strontium rutinate remains to be established. So we, uh, uh, it complies with this, but it's not a proof that this phase, uh, incommensurate spin uh, phase, is going to give this, uh, this uh, topological hole effect. So this is the first part in which I have addressed the topological hole effect in strontium brutinate, uh, and then the, this uh, incommensurate spin crystal. Uh, but we were looking to, to these topological phases in ferroelectrics per se. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I, I want you, I mean, I'm drawing your attention here mostly in this, uh, uh, range of this nice uh, plot uh, and then where we have skirmions which are isolated we have a skirmion lattice which normally gets into a hexagonal lattice and that goes into a kind of spin spiral uh, decaying into that type of cycloidal hexagonal phase we've been uh, 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 I've been showing you so and we We've been experienced and then we've learned actually pretty much in the last years from uh, uh, work, from Ramesh's work uh, at Berkeley, that such kind of chiral phases, they do occur into ferroelectrics as well. So mostly in this um, super lattice, when you have a, a ferroelectric layer, uh, a very finite thickness layer, uh, which is between two dielectric layers like strontium titanate. So lead titanate, strontium titanate, multi layers. And if you do scanning electron, uh, transmission electron microscopy, uh, you are able to map uh, this polarization. And then surprisingly, this polarization is, uh, uh, generates these vortices uh, which are chiral, and always you have uh, a chirality positive and negative pairs of such kind of uh, chirality. And they are practically like tubes, if you want, uh, resemble pretty much, pretty much the, uh, the skirmionic phase in, uh, in ferromagnets. But this is along the ferroelectric layer uh, in, in, in this way. Um, we, I mean, okay, so, so uh, the main idea why is that happening uh, is that there is an interplay between uh, strain and depolarizing fields. So the field which will prevent polarization actually to be all up or down uh, because there is the polarization is between now sandwich between uh, dielectrics, pure dielectrics, strontium titanate, um, and that uh, uh, would make uh, so. So, so uh, this polarization very much oriented in one single uh, 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 direction will maximize uh, this depolarizing field and the energy associated with that. So the system likes to 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 
to minimize the energy and make so-called uh, uh, kettle flux closure domains. But these are so small in the in the ferroid decay, uh, uh, case that they are swiddling continuously into this vortex, as I've shown you. Anyway, there is a phase transition. Uh, I'm not getting it uh, into much details here. <coughs> but you see that you have only one, it's a relatively narrow region of thicknesses in which this phase occurs. So uh, either here is, is, is no ferro electricity at all, or here is going to be classical ferro electricity, so in which we have uh, AC domain pattern. So the question is what is happening uh, in reality with, uh, with this, uh, with a ferroelectric layer, we, if we do not put it between the dielectrics, but we put it between the two metals. So it's happening in the same way or not. So we did some experiments years ago, some, some five, six years ago, and then we had tunnel junctions in which we put lead titanate uh, on a uh, uh, London strontium manganite uh, uh, thin film uh, and on top cobalt. So cobalt, it's a good metal. LSMO, it's a bad metal. Anyway, we had some hints that the polarization swiddles. But this swiddling do occur usually at the domain wall, and it's again in pairs of chirality positive and negative chir chirality. So it's a tendency to come, but it's not, nothing such nice as in the case of uh, uh, let titanate between strontium titanate uh, layer. So what we did, we changed the metal. Again, we changed the metal with another metal. So, and not surprising, the metal is strontium ruthenate. Why is that? It's just because it grows very nicely on, on, on strontium titanate, on this prosium scandate, and all these uh, 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 substrates which are used to, uh, to tune the um, embedded uh, misfit straight into, into ferroelectric layers. And then you see here the low magnification TM of the structure. We have uh, um, about uh, 4.5 nanometers, so practically 9 to 10 unit cells strontium ruthenate and 12 uh, uh, unit cell lead titanate. We, we did over an entire range of thicknesses here, uh, but I will present only one now because that's um, the most interesting. And doing again scanning electron transmission microscopy, we observed the same, if you want, or a similar um, behavior in terms of occurrence of polar vortices. Again, we have polar vortices which are uh, periodic, uh, and they are also um, uh, different chirality, so the opposite chirality uh, every each is a positive uh, or minus one plus one minus one plus one chirality. And this is the DFT calculation. So we, we, we run, Dorin runs also uh, pretty uh, good DFT calculations, uh, which gives us the hint that initially that we should look into this strontium ruthenate because that will allow the, the uh, uh, polarization to swirl. So, and Nevertheless, the, 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 the arrangement of the, of the um, uh, vortices here is not that nice. It's not that nice. Uh, and that was a little bit unexpected uh, because if it is a periodicity, but it is, is, is not that nice as, as in lead titanate. Uh, and then we went and analyzed the structure uh, in the plan view. And in the plan view, we've seen that we have this nice uh, uh, labyrinth type, which is nevertheless oriented in mostly in one direction. 
and then resemble something which you have seen already isn't yeah in the in the strontium or or in the uh ic2 phase there so but it is it's not uh, uh, that it's it's already you see the domains are now visible we can visualize them now in in a certain um uh mode the, the diffraction mode of of the electron microscopy uh where we go with the, the uh, diffraction vector along a particular crystallographic direction and then we see that we do not have only one so this is uh, now uh, diffraction is in the reciprocal space and then we see it's like a natural uh, uh Fourier uh, uh, transformation and then we see that we do not have only one periodicity we do have two periodicities and if you look here carefully so you see something also here you see that it's a kind of necklace yeah you see bats on this necklace if you zoom in you see them better but if you do a little bit of image filtering just to clean the noise these are occurring absolutely great on each every each line here which is a domain so and the conclusion is that this domain actually has a second periodicity that was for us surprising and uh, we haven't been so um how to say uh, convinced about and then uh, the only way to become very convinced is uh, just to do a macroscopic measurement, which is uh, the uh, X-ray reciprocal space mapping. Uh, we do that, uh, we did that, and then uh, we did a synchrotron, and then we see that we have this scattering here which is the vortex is associated with the vortex per uh, 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 periodicity and we have another periodicity here which is uh, associated with the perpendicular periodicity to the vortex so uh, we have twisted the uh, uh, the the 90 degrees the the uh, sample and then we measured on all those uh, two uh, periodicities so so along the uh, the periodicities so that was if you want a a um uh su surprise for us uh and we didn't know what is happening but that has sparked already the idea that this should resemble the same ic2 phase double q phase we've been observing in real space in in uh, in uh, strontium ruthenate uh in the magnetic material now the periodicity it's very very small that's only uh, uh, a few nanometers uh, nine na nanometers compared with uh, with a hundred so it's there are some orders of magnitude nevertheless in between but but it is the same structure if you want from the fundamental point of view so and then we 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 can imagine that we have the vortex here which is this one and the vortex along the vortex in this direction we can have either a uh, uh, helical mo modulation so that means we have a helix which goes into uh, the or, or along the core of the vortex and twist uh, the, um, uh, the the polarization or we have a cycloidal mo mo modulation analyzing uh, carefully what would be actually this we we land to the conclusion that it should be a cycloidal modulation S exactly similar as the ic2 phase in the strontium uh, ru ruthenate now uh, this would be i mean we have analyzed actually what would be uh, the uh, um, polarization pattern from the top from the side uh, we did uh, transmission electron microscopy along and perpendicular to the to the um, 
um, if you want, uh, uh, vortices, the vortex core. Uh, and we think we are, we are almost convinced that this is a uh, cycloidal modulation of this uh, vortex core. Uh, again, what is the driving force here? We have two metals. And uh, the two metals are, I mean, the two metal layers are strontium ruthenate, and in the middle is, is, is lead titanate. And that gives us the vortex. And not only the vortex is giving us also this cycloidal component, which is extremely costing, if you want, uh, from the energetical point of view. So we don't know why, why is this happening. So um, nevertheless, uh, uh, was a great help for us to read a paper uh, from Belaish group on uh, which was uh, almost in the same time published, which described a possible mechanism, three trilinear mechanism for an electrical equivalent of jalojinsky moria interaction. So in this case, the jalojinsky moria vector, it comes with the oxygen octahedra tilting, which will tilt, tilt the polarization. And they, there are a number of them. You see, there are 12 possibilities. So there are many of them. Uh, we didn't analyze that from the DFT point of view because it's very difficult to do uh, DFT or such kind of uh, uh, big, big uh, uh, scale uh, uh, system. We don't have the infrastructure do, doing that and neither the knowledge on, on doing that. So we are very, very basic. Uh, but we think one of those, and especially this A7, will be able just to give us. So you see that we have uh, uh, opposite and then in plane and then out of plane and then in plane, which will be, which will kick the, the polarization to swirl. So from where is coming this? So we analyzed the, our DFT results in terms of the polar, the, the, the oxygen octahedra cage tilting. Uh, and then we know that the strontium ruthenate has a tilting which is opposite. So every unit cell has an opposite tilting. It's like a checkerboard uh, um, structure and it's quite strong. Every each unit cell has about 2.5 degrees uh, tilting of, of uh, uh, oxygen octahedra. And in this case, so looking at the oxygen octahedra tilting within the polarization layer, we see that we have a, quite an important tilting at the interface. The first unit cell patterns exactly, or, or the, 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 the strontium ruthenate patterns the oxygen octahedra tilting into the strontium, uh, into the lead titanate. I must mention that the lead titanate has zero tilting. So it's not a tilted uh, uh, structure. It's not like, like bismuth ferrite, if you want. And doesn't like to be tilted. That's the idea. So we, we, we found a strong tilting in the middle of the, of the core, of the vortex core, which is quite normal because over there, there uh, it, 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 it's a lot of strain around here, but also is this one. And that actually, might generate the cycloidal uh, uh, ordering, which is due to jalojinsky moria interaction at, uh, uh, at the interface. So to summarize this work, so um, we have observed uh, a cycloidal-like ordering, which is separate, it's, 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 it's overlapped on the, on the vortex core. And that is a complex topology which is chiral, it's a chiral topology, and um, is generated by, most probably by an electric uh, jalojinsky moria in interaction, which maps the polarization exactly as the magnetic jalojinsky, the classical magnetic jalojinsky moria interaction maps the ferromagnetic uh, uh, or the magnetization in, the, in, a, in a ferromagnet. So, in our opinion, 
this is the first experimental demonstration of this electrical jalojinsky moria interaction. Uh, and uh, I think it's a more fundamental conclusion here uh, that the ferroelectricity and the ferromagnetism are intrinsically connected somehow because all phases people have seen in the ferromagnets, they have been also seen in the ferroelectric with a little bit of different, I mean, not a little bit, with the different um, characteristic length. If we, if we uh, uh, look into, into uh, characteristic length of, the, of the, all these topologies and then the veins and then the main walls and so on and so forth, but somehow at these complex topological structures, the characteristic length, they start approaching. And is the question when they will overlap and what would be the structure which will overlap or, or which contain all those topological structure, ferromagnet and polarization in the same material. It might be the same material or it might be an artificially man-made material. That would be interesting, interesting to see where is going to uh, merge uh, those uh, uh, things. Um, I think I'm finished now and I thank you very much for being with me uh, now in this uh, seminar. Thank you very much, Maureen, for very nice, uh, stimulating, inspiring talks for this new Topical, topological structures in ferroelectric uh, thin films. So uh, Justin left because of some some uh, issue he has to leave. But we have some guy before you, before I ask questions, open the to the floor. Maybe I can mention you. The, you have an old friend in the audience as well. Jimin, do you want to show your face? Liu Jimin from Nanjing University. Jimin Liu, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jimin Liu. I invited him to join the talk. He's very interesting. Yes, hi, hi, Marine. Uh, hi, Jimmy. So, yeah. so I'm here. Sorry, but I, I, I don't have any video camera. So, oh, with, okay, my, with, with my, with my, with my So, I, uh, uh, actually, uh, coming uh, already a uh, half hour. Yeah, ago, it, so it I find like a very nice talk. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always doing uh, something which is fantastic. Uh, this is uh, really good. Captain Edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's mostly the fault of my students. <laughs> yeah. Let's you know, see. you know, uh, Xin Sen Gao, yeah. Xin Sen Gao, yeah, you, are, you, are, you are a former student. So now we are working together also on the on the topic, but it's a little bit attached to this. I still not yes, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm following your, your, your work. It's very nice work. Yeah, Indeed. thank you very much. Yeah, very good, yeah. So how about it? Is uh, England? This is uh, it's good. <laughs> Sorry. So I mean, the, uh, the case in England, yeah, that is good, yeah. Oh yeah, that, that that's all right. England is nice. It's okay. It's okay. So good. That's good. Good. Okay. So Jimmy, you have any question to ask? Scientific question to ask? You can. You can be the first one. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, give yeah. me this opportunity. So my some. So, uh, uh, Mary, my, my question actually is very simple, yeah. Uh, we know that you are the first uh, uh, experiment demonstration of such a, a polarization-induced DM interactions, but I, uh, I, I didn't catch up this uh, data, but it's when you uh, switch the polarization directions, you also have the similar data to show uh, the switch of this uh, whole effect. Um. We, we do not have a direct proof of the switching. I mean, we do switch them. Yeah, yes. But uh, uh, we haven't got a, you know, a transmission electron microscopy of the, of the structure on the okay. switch. So okay. because this okay. is a little bit complicated experiment, mm -hmm. uh, probably we will need one PhD for one, one experiment, which, uh, kind of uh, jeopardize the, the PhD work if it's not uh, really working. So good, but it's, it's, it is on our uh, um, uh, menu, uh, so to speak, uh, to, to do that. 
We did, if you want, um, indirect switching, oh, I mean, switching and indirect checking of this by, mm -hmm. by uh, using uh, uh, tunneling. Because we can do now devices. That's, that's the, the most important thing. I, this is a device. Yeah, I see. I, I, I get it. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then uh, it's showing us that under strong field, polarization orients. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you let the system, it will relax within days to the initial state. But the initial state is now, uh, I mean, we cannot determine that initial state and the end state. We can say that the tunneling uh, uh, current is similar to what we had uh, before. But I don't know exactly the state what would be. I, I think it, uh, from the physical point of view, uh, it should be uh, a similar. Uh, I, I, I mean, there's nothing preventing to similar. So we are now running. Uh, <laughs> Good, uh, yeah, yeah so, so we are now running uh, uh, temperature measurements, uh, okay. transmission electron microscopy under under high temperature, just to see whether there, uh, uh, what is the phase transition of this. Good. So thank you very much. So I leave the time to all the audience uh, to uh, okay. ask a question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jimmy, for a nice question. Mm -hmm. So any other guys have questions? Okay, Pinaki. Yeah, uh, thank you for a very nice talk. I have two questions. I guess I can try to switch on my video. Oops. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I have two questions. Yep. One is, from the first part of your talk, you mentioned at the very uh, end that there is a 2Q spin uh, structure uh, in uh, strontium ruthenate, which is uh, the origin of the topological Hall effect. Right. But per se, is 2Q structure uh, chiral by itself, or uh, you need uh, 3Q? Uh the 2Q can be chiral too. I see, I see. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the 2Q, the chirality is not going to be, uh, let's say, bi-dimensional. Mm -hmm. So uh, is, I, I have the feeling that it's going to be uh, only along uh, this structure, but if the structure is, is, is randomly shown, so we didn't. I see. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't uh, scan the entire. I mean, so very, very large uh, uh, area. So we scan only microns. But uh, uh, no, at the microscopic no. level, you may have those structures which are ninety okay. degrees. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, well, but is uh, there any uh, evidence of any uh, spin orbit coupling, or it's already included? In? Uh, I mean, for the spin orbit coupling, I'm not quite sure. I because see. we have we have let titanate. Okay, let it's quite a big thing. Yeah, so so that might actually generate spin orbit coupling. Yeah, but since we've measured a uh, broken symmetry within the couple of unit cells at the interface within the strontium ruthenate, mm -hmm. uh, our first hint was this very specific. Uh, um, uh, breaking symmetry is generating uh, this uh, jaloginsky moria interaction. I see. Because bulk it, DM is usually very weak. Uh, no? uh, sorry? Bulk DMI is generally very weak. It's very weak, but it's nothing to, uh, let's say, I, I have no measure of, of what weak and strong is in relation to what weak and strong is the magnetization. I see. So it needs big kick or it needs just a little bit of kick to, to start swiddling. I see. So uh, I, 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 I don't have that feeling. Okay. Uh, and if I may ask one uh, other question. Yes, please. Electric DMI. I can you please explain it a little bit more? Um, formally, is the same.
formally is the same as the uh, uh, magnetic DMI. Now, the polarization, you have to see that the polarization is not for the moment, if, or, or, or is not an atom related uh, right. uh, property. Right. It's a property of a, of a unit cell. Right, right. Of the, of the entire symmetry. Mm -hmm. So if you change the arrangement of the unit cell, mm -hmm. then you change the polarization direction. And right. that is right. linked. Now, if there is a twisting or, 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 or uh, uh, a kind of rotation of the oxygen octahedra within that uh, cage of unit cell, so that means polarization follows. Okay, okay, okay. So, and again, uh, what you have seen there, those tiny vectors, yeah. so which shows this, we have a vortex like this and we have a vortex like this. You won't see that. So practically what we do, we measure the position of the atoms by transmission electron microscopy we reconstruct the unit cell and we, we, we reconstruct, if you want, what would be the polarization vector from exactly this distortion. I see. So I distortion see. can be as small as 20 picometers, which is a challenge to measure. So you have mm -hmm. to have a damn good microscope to do that. So it's a complex measurement, is not something you can you can measure easily. But the 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 beauty of this is that unlike the magnetization, when you can determine the 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 reciprocal phase uh, or or mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the arrangement of the of the magnetization only with neutrons, by diffraction yeah, of, yeah. of the neutrons. In this case, we can do that with the X-ray. It's okay. much simple. We can do it in the lab. Yeah. So, and then we can get exactly how is distorted if it is a periodic distortion. Exactly how it is okay. di distorted by X-ray. So we have two different tools. So is the reciprocal uh, space where X-ray, which tells us the double Q structure, mm -hmm. and we have the real space, which we can map by transmission electron microscopy. So it's something the magnetism does not have. Okay. And is there any Moria's rules for these interactions? Uh, there are some rules exactly, so they are coming mostly uh, uh, from the symmetry of the system. Uh, and I, uh, I, I mean, um, I'm really sorry, so I cannot go through them. Uh, I myself, I'm not understanding them fully. So um, I, I need to go and then read a little bit more. But uh, uh, the, the person to ask uh, is Lauren Belaish uh, uh, from Arkansas, okay. who, who who has come up with uh, with this uh, uh, beautiful work, uh, and, oh. and and I think uh, that is the work to address for this general Jinsky Moria interaction. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very welcome. much for a nice question, Pinaki. And now, uh, okay, there's other two persons uh, raising hands. Can I can I invite Rajdeep to to raise a question first? Oh, okay. Actually, uh, I think Rancha Rancha asks first. Let, let Rancha go first. Rancha raised his hand, hand first, so, so let him go first. No, Rancha, okay, Rancha, you start first. Okay. So can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great, great. Okay. Up, well, let's say, thank you very much. This uh, talk is excellent. And also congratulations on your recent uh, Nature paper. Thank you very um, much. Yeah, I'm very interested in your uh, uh, spin uh, crystal, strontium ruthenate work. Uh, I'm interested in the origin of the uh, observation. Uh, if I look at the structure, I can see there are strontium titanate, uh, lead titanate, of course, the strontium ruthenate. I was, I'm thinking where is the origin? Um, as far as I know, there is a, a phase transition of strontium titanate at 105 K, which is a cubic yep. to tetragonal phase. And also 
uh, if we talk about ferry electricity, PTO is TC is pretty high. So you, you also mentioned that you want to do temperature dependent measurement. So how high temperature you can go? Can you go like about 105K to see whether it's yeah, from yeah, STO yeah. or sure. about 150K to see whether it's from transfer ruthenate? Sure. So, so um, we, um, as you see, this effect here yeah. does occur under 80 Kelvin. Okay. So the, this is the below TCO starts from ruthenate. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so no, this is the uh, in the, this is on uh, on uh, strontium ruthenate. This is the uh, uh, topological hall effect in strontium ruthenate yeah. on let titanate. Yeah. Then you see it comes down to to under 100 Kelvin at 80 yeah. Kelvin that disappears completely. You okay. See? Uh, uh -huh. Other work, so if you say, if you see here, uh, that's a thickness dependence. Oh, the, the strontium ruthenate. This is on strontium ruthenate, the bare strontium ruthenate. Uh -huh. And then you see it's coming uh, around this temperature, which is 60, 70 Kelvin, 80 oh. Kelvin, yeah? It's so that same. means it's way below the TCO strontium ruthenate. Exactly. So uh, I don't think that strontium ruthenate has much influence from that point of view. So STO may play a bigger role. Um, it could be, it could not be, have no idea. I so see. Actually, if, if we speak about the origin of the topological Hall effect, yep. strontium ruthenate, uh, I don't think our work is uh, simplifying the thing. It's actually uh, um, making things even worse. I see. Okay. Because it is another layer. Okay. It might be simple. It might be a very simple explanation like, like this one. Mm. You have different thicknesses due to the growth process mm. with different patches and every each thickness has its own anomalous whole effect. Yeah. And then you have uh, uh, this, you know, uh, if you overlap those two effects, you get this one. This is a kind of mechanical uh, uh, vision of, of uh, the topological Hall effect, and I don't believe it. I see. Because, because the, the electrons, you, you, we have to think about that. The electrons flows into this or into this direction. Uh, and if I have patches which are highly resistive, they will go along. I mean, they will, they will avoid them. Oh. So, so it's it's simple shunt, as it is. Or shunt the, the high resistance region. Exactly. So you won't see that patches. But if you have layers, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so the layers, it's a completely different because you have a parallel flow of mm. of two uh, 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 you know, rivers of, of, mm. of electrons. Every mm. each flow with its own interaction. And mm. as we have seen here, we do have a kind of half of this thin film, mm. it is non-central symmetric, mm. half of the thin film is central symmetric. I see. So it might be that one has one uh, anomalous whole effect, the other one has, has another one. I see, okay. Well, um, whether this is related to the structure, magnetic structure we have seen, I cannot answer this question. I see. Yeah, it's pretty complicated. Yeah. Right. Okay, um, uh, I, I, if I have time, I can, can I ask a second question? Yeah, please. Okay, um, so because you have the capability to do uh, real space imaging, uh, I wonder, did you like um, image a larger area? Because if we talk about uh, the impact of ferry electricity from uh, lead titanate or the impact of strontium titanate, uh, both the material have domains, right? So if it's a very electric domain and the strontium titanate has uh, like e that this uh, tetragonal domains. So did you do the larger areas imaging to see whether we got some, yes, some, some hints? We did, we did, uh, uh, but we didn't get any, any, any hint. Uh, it see. doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, because uh, uh, sometimes those interaction can be uh, practically hidden by by uh, natural things like topography. I see. 
Okay. So, so, so uh, we have to probably use different uh, type of investigation, like like uh, uh, this uh, uh, diamond. So, so uh, investigation in I which see. we have a better resolution uh, in the in the mapping, the magnetization. But we don't have these capabilities. Probably some other people can do that. I see. So basically, you did a larger area imaging, but we, you don't yes, see obvious inhomogeneity. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We it was noisy. I see. But it cannot exclude the origin no. of the other other possibility. No. no. I uh, see. We are working on that exactly to see, as you mentioned, and it's a it's a good uh, 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 thing if it is a coupling between. You mean couple it between the bottom two layers and the structure. Exactly, roof. exactly. Between okay. the, 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 the pattern within the ferroelectric layer and the pattern within the ferromagnetic layer. So I probably see. they can merge somehow. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Which is uh, chicken, which is egg. Uh, that's another We don't question. know. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's all my question. Thank yeah, you very thank much. You. Thank you, Rachel, for questions. So, uh, Rajdeep, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the question for uh, I have a very simple question. Thank you for the excellent uh, talk, of course. Uh, uh, and I got to learn something new. I was just wondering, I mean, uh, because, uh, I mean, over here, you're talking about these ferroelectric skirmions and uh, in analogy to the magnetic skirmions, probably the possible applications will be in the field of data storage and data, you know, transmission. Are these kind of applications look forward for these kind of uh, topologically protected structures? And if yes, uh, I understand for magnetic skirmions, we normally use the spin transfer torque. I mean, you pass the spin current to make them move. So what will be the strategy in this case, particularly for these uh, ferroelectric skirmions? How to make them move? Um, how to make them move? Uh, probably applying a, 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 an electric field on them. Oh, that will do. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, probably that will not move them, they will rather be destroyed. Ah. So in a sense that you orient polarization in one direction exactly. or, or, or in the other one, and then uh, they can uh, come back into a completely different pattern maybe or, or, or something similar. I, I, I don't have this. Uh, there are some experiments uh, run by, by Ramesh group showing that uh, there is an interaction, interesting interaction between light and those topological structures. Mm. So, and it is also interesting to see that applying a, 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 an electric field destroy them. So that has been also uh, done. And then they, ca they come back to, to, to a certain extent but uh, uh, again, we have to mention that the studies they've been doing was in this super lattice type. When you have, uh, you know, uh, your, your, your ferroelectric is sandwiched between dielectric, which is strontium titanate. Uh, and that is a completely different boundary condition. Uh, uh, in our case, it's a metal, uh, which is much more forgiven uh, in terms of um, uh, depolarizing field. Most of the depolarizing field is taken, nevertheless, by, by the metal. It's only a residual one which, which uh, caused this swiddling and all that uh, structure which, which uh, doesn't like uh, lead titanate to have. Uh, or or uh, it's much more probable to be in the lead titanate than the simple uh, um, single domain or, or you know, large domains of ferroelectricity. Okay, coming back to, to your um, question, uh, if we can use them uh, for data storage. I don't know. So um, probably uh, the, from the fundamental point of view, if we have this swiddling, so this, this uh, uh, vortices, these vortices are not anymore associated with the polarization as the ordering parameter. So the ordering parameter is the torus, which is related to exactly the swirl of this. Uh -huh. 
So, and uh, whether these torus can be used to encode any information in, I have no idea. Okay. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Rashid. I think uh, it's already 6.30, I don't want, although they may have some questions from the students, I think we don't want to hold everybody too long. And, That's uh, fine, so I can take uh, uh, two questions, it's not a I problem. I guess you haven't had your breakfast yet. <laughs> No, it's not about the breakfast here. I'm not having <laughs> breakfast anyway. I mean, uh, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Let's have Any questions from the students. Asking. Yeah, just now all the questions from the faculties. I, I guess there are also some students in the audience. Students usually go break for, uh, go dinners earlier. So, Maureen, I, I'm also curious about the, the implication of such a complicated topological structures. And... Uh, how they can be, how they can create some potential. How can they change the, the, the field? How can change the application of such a fair electric prop uh, materials? Um, Onji, so let's put it like this. I'm old enough not to care about any application anymore. <laughs> That's just for my curiosity. Yes, just for pure science. Just for pure science. So uh, probably it will have, or, or, but let's think at the fundamental levels, it's exactly what I was uh, telling you. So um, when we look at classical ferroelectrics and the classical ferromagnets, you see that the ferromagnets, they do have large domains, yeah. which are tens, hundreds of micro. And they have domain walls, which are rather big, okay? They have nil, they have a block winding to get from one domain to the other one. Polarization have generally orders of magnitude, smaller domains, and only one unit cell, two unit cells, classical 180 degree domain walls, okay? Easing like. So, as you scale down all the systems, you have, again, a difference between all these phases which do, do occur in both ferromagnets and ferroelectric. Mm -hmm. But the difference between the scale, the ratio between this scale, is become smaller and smaller and smaller. So the question is, where is going to collapse into a single uh, uh, characteristic size? Is that a special material where all this ferroelectric and ferromagnet would be together yeah. in the same size and having the same domain wall type and having the same behavior? I don't know. There's a lot of that room to be, explore. <laughs> but that would be probably where the true magnetoelectric coupling will be. That's why I'm also thinking, you're talking about the scalings. I'm thinking that people are also uh, talking about quantum fair electricities. And if you make this materials extremely smaller, one uh, zero dimensional, so like, the, like this kind of nano dots you made before in Halle, would be yeah. generating some I mean, so, 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 so uh, you have guys there which are doing together with, uh, with uh, Shenzhen. I mean, so, so it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a natural way to, to go for it. Yeah. You know, there's many so, different ways. And you know very good how to do. I mean, so. Yeah. There's many different to ways to do it, to play with it. Yeah. But it's yeah. a very interesting playground. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I think if there's no other question from the audience, from the students, I think uh, uh, I would like to invite you guys to join me to thank Marin again, everybody. Uh, thank you for staying and listening to the talk and asking questions. Marin, also thank you very much for spending the much. Monday morning with yes, us. Yes, so thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's let's, better let's in the morning than in the, in the evening anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's thank keep you very much for being with you and uh, inviting me there. So. Yeah. 
My okay, hopefully we will see you next year. Ho looking forward to that. Okay, okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.